So there are new calls for Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito to recuse himself from Donald Trump cases. The chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Dick Durbin, says, quote, flying an upside down American flag, a symbol of the so-called Stop the Steal movement, clearly creates the appearance of bias. Justice Alito should recuse himself immediately from cases related to the 2020 election and the January 6th insurrection. This is in response to a New York Times report that an upside down American flag was flown outside of the justice's home days after the January 6th Capitol riot. Ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, Representative Jerry Nadler, joins us now here at the table. Welcome, Congressman. Congressman, so good to see you. So, good to okay, be here. So part of what is interesting to me is not that, that just that this happened, but Alito's response to the New York Times saying in an email, quote, I had no involvement whatsoever in the flying of the flag. It was briefly placed by Mrs. Alito in response to a neighbor's use of objectionable and personally insulting language on yard signs. But he does not deny that the flag was flown as a show of support for Stop the Steal. Yes, nor does he deny that it was there for several days. And uh, that tells me that, uh, um, that it was okay with him. Uh, if it had been flown for a couple of hours and he found out about it and said, take it down, that might be a different thing. But it was flown for several days. He should certainly recuse himself from any January 6th related from case, from any case relating to the... To, uh, uh, President Trump, uh, because he's associated with the Stop the Steal movement now, whether he wants to be or not. And, set, and uh, Justice uh, uh, Thomas should also dissociate him, recuse himself for the same reason, because his wife uh, was a noted uh, protagonist in, uh, in the Stop the Steal movement. And you're supposed to, uh, as a judge, you're supposed to avoid not just the impropriety, but the appearance of impropriety. This also shows the necessity of an enforceable judicial code of ethics there is a, uh, for the Supreme Court. There is an enforceable judicial code of ethics for every federal judge other than the Supreme Court. Uh, Supreme Court uh, Chief Justice Roberts promulgated a code of ethics, but it's totally unenforceable. So to, to your point, uh, Congressman, you had uh, uh, Hakeem Jeffries um, making note of that, of that and, and saying uh, what Democrats are, are prepared to do should they take uh, control of the House. Let's take a quick listen. We do need oversight of this Supreme Court that has undermined freedom in many instances, including a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions. And there have been several documented instances of seemingly corrupt behavior without any consequence. At minimum, in our system of checks and balances with separate and co-equal branches of government, it is Congress's responsibility to engage in responsible oversight over the judicial branch. So it's long overdue to bring the Supreme Court in line with the f rest of the federal judiciary. How does that look in your view? And, and what, what can we or what should we be saying now in this space instead of waiting until next January or spring? What should the messaging be coming out of Congress about what we're hearing coming out of the Supreme Court? Well, the messaging right now, I mean, we should certainly enact an, uh, a, uh, an enforceable code of ethics. The messaging right now should be that uh, both uh, uh, Justices Alito and Thomas, who are uh, involved in one way or another, or at least an appearance in the Stop the Steal movement, should recuse themselves from all cases involving January 6th and invo involving Donald Trump. Um, you've got the uh, immunity case mm -hmm. where, they, where they both should recuse themselves. Uh, they should have recused themselves on the uh, uh, Colorado uh, 14th Amendment case, but they didn't. I think it's also very interesting that they turned around that Colorado case to the advantage of Donald Trump very quickly, mm -hmm. whereas the immunity case, which should be an open and shut right, case, right. Um, they refused uh, uh, Pro Special Prosecutor Smith's request that they uh, skip the Court of Appeals and take it up. And then, instead of, when they did take it up, instead of doing it quickly, they scheduled arguments for the last day of the, ter of the argument term, uh, April 25th, and they'll probably not get a, a, a ruling till the end of June, beginning of July, the last week of the term. And uh, they're almost... And from the questions the justices were asking, as I said, there should be an open and shut case. Uh, um, 
uh, if, if the president of the United States, you know, they seem to be trying to look and see, uh, uh, make a distinction between official and unofficial acts. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. If the president of the United States officially ordered uh, SEAL Team 6 to murder his rival, he's, he clearly would not be or should not be uh, immune from that. Mm -hmm. So there's no distinction between official and unofficial acts. As, and no court has ever even hinted at that until now. But it looks like they're going to try to do that to favor uh, uh, President Trump. This looks like a court majority that is uh, totally in the tank for Donald Trump. You know, it, it, lots has been made about um, Justice Kavanaugh, uh, Amy Coney Barrett, again, the justices who Donald Trump himself put on the court. But it seems to me is that the justices that are most concerning and most dangerous to the unraveling of one of the mm. key pillars of of, of our institution that is our democracy, our democratic republic, are actually Justice Thomas and Justice Alito. And, I mean, kudos to the neighbors that, that, that came forward so we even know that right. this happened. But this is, this, this is a dire moment. I, I, I just shudder to think, what if, what if Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson had a Black Lives Matter flag flying outside her house? It would be wall to wall coverage. The Republicans in Congress, from the rooter to the tutor. Oh my goodness! Would it would be like mind. we need her in here right now. It feels like there's a little uproar about this, and by Monday we won't be talking about. And it. And can I just underline something that is especially scary, given the docket that this court mm -hmm, has. Mm -hmm. Given the docket this court has, it's especially scary. And uh, but but you know, look at some of the other appointees of Trump too, uh, all three of them. Uh, and remember how one was stolen by Senator uh, McConnell, in, in mm -hmm. effect. But all three of them, uh, when asked about Roe v. Wade, uh, assured the Senate that is settled law and it's settled precedent. They all but swore that we're not going to overturn it. But of course, they did it the first opportunity. Um, so they all, none of them have clean hands. None of them have clean hands. And again, we need, uh, I would say we need two things. We need uh, an enforceable code of ethics, and we need term limits on the Supreme Court, which is a bill I've introduced. Mm. I, I know we're going about to take a break, Simone, but I, wa I want to do a follow-up with you on uh, whether or not you, the Congress can, uh, if we have time, yeah. if, if, can you call the Chief Justice in? You, you, yes. you, the Congress, the Congress funds the Supreme Court. The Congress has direct oversight of the Supreme Court because of that. Is it, are you at a point where you can call the Chief Justice in and have an accounting of the behavior uh, and the reporting around the behavior of members of his court uh, relative to the things that we've discussed, their refusal to recuse themselves from, mm -hmm. from cases that if they were a lower, lower court federal judge, they absolutely would be recused. It wouldn't recused, even be a It wouldn't be a question. So what, why is this Supreme Court allowed to behave uh, uber law, mm -hmm. above the law, above the ethical requirements uh, that every other federal just, just judge in the system is allowed? And that, would, for me, would be worth having the Chief Justice come in and explain. And I'll, well, I'll, I'll add one more thing on top of it, sir. If, I thought no one was above the law in this country, but it feels as though the Supreme Court justices are because they've been allowed to, up until this point, to essentially do whatever they want with no consequences. Well, it does, it does feel that way. If I were the chairman of the Judiciary Committee rather than the ranking I know, member, I know, I know. I would, I would, I would see what I can do about uh, calling them in. Now, Senator Durbin uh, is the chairman in the Senate, and uh, perhaps he will do that. I hope he will. Yeah. Yeah.